Hey, well going. It's Mr. Garfield here, and we're going to be doing another Cape Integrated Mathematics question. Okay, I'm focusing on quadratic inequalities. All right. So here I have a question from the 2015 specimen paper provided in the syllabus. All right, this is model one, which is foundations of mathematics. So here the question says you are to find the range of values of x for which 2x squared plus x minus 15 is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, we know that this, this is a quadratic inequality because of course we have the quadratic here on the left-hand side, 2x squared plus x minus 15. Okay, and we have the inequality sign greater than or equal to. Okay, so let's just solve this question here. So let me write solution. All right, so we are given 2x squared. All right, let me write that better. 2x squared plus x minus 15 is greater than or equal to zero. All right, that is what we're given. So what I'm going to do is to find the roots of this quadratic on the left-hand side. Okay, and you can do it two ways. You could either you could either use the quadratic formula or you could factorize first. All right, I'm gonna choose factorization first. Okay, but some in some cases, not all the times you are able to factorize a quadratic. All right, so you have to go to the quadratic formula. All right, so I need my product here. All right, my product. So I'm going to multiply, okay, my product here, I'm going to multiply the coefficient of the x squared term, that's the number in front of x squared, which is two, so that's a times c, a has a value of two, and I'm multiplying it by the c value, which is negative 15, okay? Now, when I multiply these two numbers, I will get negative 30, and I need a sum, which is my b value, and that's the number in front of x here, which is a positive one. All right, so my b value is one. So I need two numbers. When I multiply them, I get my product, which is negative 30. And when I add them, I get my sum, which is positive one. Okay, now what are those two numbers? Well, I know that if I multiply negative five by six, I will get the negative 30. And if I add negative five with six, I will get one okay so i'm going to split the middle term into these two factors so i can write this as 2x squared plus 6x all right so that takes care of the positive 6 there and then i'm going to have the negative 5x okay minus the 15 here and all of that is greater than or equal to zero okay let us factorize now so we're going to factorize by grouping. We just look at these two terms here. What is common? Two is a common factor and X is also a common factor. So when I factor out a two X, inside the brackets, I will have X plus three remaining, right? Because if we divide two X squared by two X, we get X. And if we divide the six X by two X, we get three. Good. We just now look at these two terms here. I have negative five X minus 15. Well, I recognize that negative five is a common factor. So when I factor out negative five, I will also have X plus three remaining, okay? Because negative five X divided by negative five will give me positive X there. And negative 15 divided by negative five gives me a positive three. And all of that is greater than or equal to zero, all right? Now notice that these factors here are the same, okay? Whenever you're doing factorization by grouping, when you have four terms and you're factorizing, that must also happen, right? You must have the same thing inside the brackets there. And of course, if you don't have the same thing inside of the brackets, it means that you have done something wrong. Okay, so I recognize that X plus three is now a common factor and I will now write what is left on the outside, which is two X minus five. So that quadratic is now fully factorized, okay? The factors are x plus three and two x minus five, and that product there is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so 
what I'm going to do now is to let f of x be our quadratic function. All right, the function was 2x squared plus x minus 15. But of course, in, in its factored form, it is x plus 3 multiplied by 2x minus 5. Okay, that is your f of x, which is the quadratic. All right. Now remember, I stated that we need to get the roots of this quadratic. Okay, so I'm going to say when f of x is equal to zero, so in order to get the roots, you have to equate the factors to zero. All right, and then solve for x. So when f of x is equal to zero, it implies that what? f of x we know is x plus 3 multiplied by 2x minus 5. And we're saying that f of x is equal to 0. OK? So if x plus 3 is equal to 0, all right, if x plus 3 multiplied by 2x minus 5 is equal to 0, it means that either, either the x plus 3 is equal to 0, or it means that the 2x minus 5 is equal to 0. So if x plus 3 is equal to 0, you solve for x here. So x is equal to negative 3. OK, so either x equals negative 3 or x is equal to 2x minus 5 equals 0 means that x is going to be equal to 5 over 2. All right, so either x is equal to negative 3 or x equals 5 over 2. Good. So in order to solve this inequality now, I'm going to take a graphical approach. All right, I'm going to sketch the graph of f of x. OK, so I'm just going to do a little sketch here. All right, so that you can get the, the picture. Okay, let's work with that as my y axis, and I will use this here as my x axis. All right, so here is my x axis, and I have my y axis here. Great. Now I'm just going to put the positions of the, the x values on the number line here. So we know that here is going to be zero in the middle there, okay? So negative three is to the left of zero, so negative three is gonna be somewhere here, right? So this is gonna be negative three, and we have five over two, which is to the right of zero, since it's a positive value. So five over two is gonna be somewhere here, okay? So I'm gonna have five over two here. Great, now, Remember, remember that my quadratic here, all right? What I'm trying to solve here is this. I'm trying to solve 2x squared plus x minus 15 is greater than or equal to zero, all right? That's what I'm trying to solve. Now, please note that this value here, the value in front of x squared is positive, okay? Now, whenever the value of, whenever the value in front of x squared is positive, it means that the quadratic is going to have a minimum point, right? Meaning, meaning that it is going to shape like this, right? If the value was negative, then it's going to have a maximum point. That's something that you have to know, okay? So this one here is when the value in front of x squared, we normally call it a, right? Like if you have ax squared plus bx, plus c, okay? So the a value that we're talking about is greater than zero, means that we're gonna have a minimum point here. And of course, if the a value is less than zero, meaning that it's negative, we're gonna have a maximum point there, okay? So if the a value is positive, you have a minimum point. If the a value is negative, you have a maximum point. So we know that our a value here is positive two, Right, so it means that we're gonna have a minimum point. So I'm just going to draw a rough sketch of the quadratic here, right? I don't know where exactly the minimum point is, but that's not my concern, all right? So I'm just gonna draw the curve like this, okay? So you draw it through the root there, and you, you make a turn somewhere there, okay? And you draw it through the other root there, good. So this is our rough sketch of the f of x. Okay, great. Okay, so 
That is our f of x, right? Which is the two x squared plus x minus 15. And we're trying to solve that quadratic when it is greater than or equal to zero. So whenever you want the x values greater than or equal to zero, okay, it means that you're gonna have to look above the x-axis. So greater than zero means that you're looking above the x-axis. What part of the graph is above the x-axis, right? This part of the graph here is above the x-axis, right? That part of the graph here, good. So it means that this is gonna be my solution. So the solution is, you can write the solution in two different ways. You can either use the set builder notation or the interval notation. I am going to use the set builder, the set builder notation, all right? So we're gonna have the set there. So the set of all X such that X is a member of the set of real numbers. Okay, now this part of the graph here is two, is above the x axis, right? And that is our solution when all the x values less than negative three. Okay, so we're gonna have x is less than negative three. Okay, or this part of the graph is also above the x axis. And you recognize that we're focusing on the x values greater than five over two. Okay. So we're gonna have x is greater than five over two here. Okay, but we're not done with our solution yet because remember now that the question said that they want greater than or equal to zero. Greater than or equal to zero. So if you want equal to zero, it means that you're gonna have the equal to part here and the equal to part here. Okay, so that is gonna be my solution. X is less than or equal to negative three or x is greater than or equal to five over two. All right, so I hope that this video was helpful. If it was, please ensure to like up the video and subscribe to the channel. I am Mr. Garth Reed, student ambassador for the University of Technology Jamaica, and I'm a mathematics teacher in training in the School of Mathematics and Statistics. I thank you for joining.